In today's video, we're going to talk about the first bus rapid transit or BRT introduced in Miami-Dade County. Now, this project is still under construction with most of it already completed. The project includes building 14 new enclosed BRT stations and the process of rehabilitating 32 local bus stops along a 20-mile stretch known as the South Dade Transit Way. The transit way starts at the Southwest 344th Street parking ride to the south. It crosses five municipalities along the way and ends at the Dadeland South Metro Rail Station on the northern end. This project is going to be a game changer so let's explore it further. The South Day BRT aims at reducing travel time while providing passengers a comfortable waiting experience at these new structures. As mentioned, 14 are being built along the corridor. Features include air conditioning, which is a must in South Florida, Wi-Fi, 24-hour security, ADA-compliant level boarding platforms, and the technology to prepay fares for faster boarding. Now, prepaying fares is not the only thing that will keep things moving faster. Let me show you. They are going to add traffic signal preemption technology. Look at that. They're going to have gate arms on this side, this side for turning vehicles as well. You can see one across the street. And every time a bus is about to pass along the transit way, it will activate the lights on both sides so that way they can stay red and they can just go by without any delays. The goal of that technology is to obviously keep things flowing along the transit way. It's being described as giving it something similar to rail-like timing, rail-like travel time. So. Basically, every time a train goes by a, a intersection, the arms go down beforehand, everyone stops and the trains just go uninterrupted. Well, with this, it'll allow the buses to follow a similar path. Okay, so a huge detail that must be mentioned is that the gate arms will be activated during morning and afternoon rush hour. That's 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. on weekdays. Headways in both directions will be seven and a half minutes during both peaks and 15 to 30 minutes during off-peak. The biggest challenge with the traffic signal preemption has been the proximity to US-1, a major roadway, and the fact that there's over 40 intersections along this corridor. Begs the question, why didn't they just extend the metro rail over the transit way? So all along the transit way, just imagine every single bus stop was just this. I mean, it has a really long cover to shield you from the rain, but even on the windy days, the rain is still gonna wet you, and it's still uh, outdoors, so you don't have any air conditioning. So they are rehabilitating 32 local bus stops. So these will remain, but those BRT stations, oh, we got a bus passing by right now. That's the 38. We're gonna talk a little bit about the bus routes in a bit. But yeah, basically these 14 BRT stations are air conditioned, as I mentioned. So it surely beats this. This won't go away, like I said, but the BRT stations will be plentiful along the entire 20 mile corridor. And yeah, this is really all you have here. It's metal benches. Like I said, they are rehabilitating them. It does look pretty old and run down. Looks like a payphone used to be here at some point. And an empty outlet. So while we have these today, I am not sure these might be what's replacing it. They are a lot smaller than these, but this looks like it's modern. It's got a glass enclosure on the side, on the back. It's got a solar panel on top. Uh, I'm not too sure if that's the new ones that are coming, but it definitely is a reduction in size. Probably because it doesn't need that much size because you've got the BRT station literally down there on the other side of the street. So that might be a look at what is to come for these other bus stops. Over at Southwest 168th Street, they've even constructed a five level parking garage in the middle of the transit way, complete with a really high clearance to allow the buses to travel right through it. Seriously, this was just a road for buses to run through like we see all along the transit way. This parking structure has 645 parking spaces, EV chargers, bicycle storage, and restrooms. Let's see if we can get a little close up of the interior. This is the Caribbean Boulevard BRT station. You can see we're by the 200th Street intersection. Uh, so you've got signage showing southbound, which would be going this way, and you've got signage showing northbound, going that way towards the very end of the transit way. Let's get a little bit of a close up in here if we can. You can see it's open. We've got uh, screens up there that'll give you the travel time, the arrival of the buses. Security looks like he's about to talk to me. So the inside of these BRT stations will be air conditioned. Then you can see they've got screens up there, cameras, uh, allowing you to see the schedule when the bus is about to arrive on either side. It isn't so big in there from what I see. And then there's obviously 24 hour security presence here. Thank you. So the stations aren't open yet. That was just a little peek. You really can't see anything because uh, not everything is installed, but there will be Wi-Fi, like I said, restrooms at the parking garage, not the BRT stations. It's not big enough for that. Um, and otherwise it is just a, a nice air conditioned place to wait for your bus, as opposed to the, the local stops that you saw earlier that are getting the work done that they need, but 
right now they're still in a you know dilapidated state people will just walk up this ramp right here they've got crosswalks on either side come down this way and walk into the brt stations like i said 14 throughout the corridor another amenity that's not just exclusive to the parking garage is you've got covered bike storage at each of these brt station looks like they have a good amount as well we've seen these at the metro rail stations but now it's nice to see them coming to the new brt stations and here's just a quick look at the exterior of the structure i just showed you the inside of you've got big open windows along the sides no way you can miss your bus if it has arrived and then there's more screens over there so if you want to wait out on the platform maybe it's a chilly day out and you don't mind being out catching the breeze then they do have the schedules up there as well as the inside if you want to get cooled down uh, inside the brt station by the way this video has been made so easy because there's like this bike slash jogging path running along the newly paved uh, transit way here's a bus coming by so it makes my job easy i was wondering i was like am i gonna have to ride where the buses are but no this is nice i think this already existed there are some areas that look like they've been touched up they've added the the markings for bicycles and, and joggers and all that good stuff here's the martin road brt station just several blocks north of where we just were it's a lot of glare i know but i just want to give you guys an idea uh, in terms of the size of this thing so the air conditioned portion really starts right at that silver beam right there and extends up until the exit point for when you're going to go board right over here and if you hear a loud noise it's that truck over there there's active work being done at this BRT station. The other one didn't really have anybody but security. One cool thing, which I really guess they had no choice, and it's a, a huge plus in my opinion, the platforms are leveled with the bus. So you just go right on. I wanna show you guys the enclosure. This is the outer shell above the BRT station. We're gonna take a little peek through here just so you can get a close up of that platform. So really nice. You still get a little bit of sunlight. It's a bit diffused so it won't be harsh from either angle and of course it is covered air conditioned at the station more screens facing both ways so you can get an idea of when the bus is expected to arrive and then as i mentioned those leveled platforms right over there and then they also have some seating here and then we also have a water fountain that you'll be able to use looks like they have multiple there and on the taller part, I think that is for filling up water bottles. And then over here, I see a cable and a lightning bolt. So that looks like a charging station. No doubt they're gonna have some inside the actual air conditioned station, but it's really nice. Now that I see, there's one right there. So you can charge your phone there, charge your phone there on either side of these benches. And then on either side of those benches, more charging ports. This is honestly so cool. Okay, so while I was researching for this project, I started wondering, Okay, they're adding all of these things. We're gonna talk about the cost, by the way. I haven't mentioned it, it's a lot. Uh, 14 BRT stations, rehabilitating 32 local bus stops. How many people actually travel along this corridor? And I've got the ridership numbers for a couple of routes. But one thing that I will mention, this is exciting, first of all, for people who live in the neighborhood can walk here and now they don't have to sweat if they're going to work. Because like I said, the northern part of the corridor is a Dadeland South Metro Rail Station. So suppose you live anywhere down here as far down as maybe towards Homestead. You can take the bus, like I said, rail-like travel time, so they're not stopping at the intersections. Continue all the way, essentially non-stop, unless you're getting people on and off the bus at these stations, and then getting to the Metro Rail station, getting on the train, and going pretty much anywhere that the Metro Rail serves. So you can work in downtown Miami and live in Homestead, and it'll not take as long as it currently does without the uh, traffic signals being activated. So the first route we're going to talk about the 38 Transitway Max. This is the most popular route with an average weekday boarding of 6,911 people in the month of June. Now this route does run the entirety of the 20 mile corridor and it runs seven days a week. So every single day it runs. That's not the case for the 34 and the 39 Transitway Express routes. They serve a limited part of this corridor. You're not gonna see it going from Homestead all the way to the Dayland Station. You're gonna just see a portion of it. And it doesn't run on weekends. It only runs Monday through Friday, only during the morning rush hour and only during the afternoon rush hour. So for the 34 and 39 routes, you're seeing an average weekday boarding of 1,720 and 730 people respectively. All right, so now the big question, how much is this all costing? You've got a lot of stations, a lot of technology going up. 
a lot of construction, a lot of rehabilitation you're doing. And of course, it's not a short route, it's 20 miles. Granted, while it is a 20 mile corridor, it's not like this was all grass and like buildings were here that they had to tear down or anything. The road already existed. They're just building VRT stations along the corridor and then adding those traffic signals to halt traffic. Oh, we got the 38 Max passing right now. Just talked about that one. So the design build contract was valued at $368 million. Funding came from local, state, and federal levels. So everyone pretty much contributed to this massive project. And this isn't the only rapid transit project being planned or worked on in Miami-Dade County. In fact, it's one of five rapid transit corridors of the Smart Miami Area Rapid Transit Program or just smart. We've got the Northeast Corridor, the North Corridor, the Kendall Corridor, the East to West Corridor, and Beach Corridor, which is particularly my favorite. I may be biased, but we need that Metro Mover linked to Miami Beach. Yeah, those are the five that are in the pipeline technically. And then of course you have this one here, which is the South Dade Transit Way Corridor. One thing I didn't mention is that these things are wide. So while you've got a bus designated to stop at the BRT station, on the left hand side they've actually got a through lane for buses that are not serving the brt station like all major transportation projects this is going to require an operations center to keep things flowing smoothly miami-dade county recently broke ground on the south dade transit operations center located on a 20 acre site just outside the homestead air reserve base it will have the capacity to maintain 100 new 60 foot articulated electric buses along with green energy features like solar power and a water reclaim system that will be used to wash the buses other functions at the operations center will include the maintenance areas part storage driver training bus dispatch and in the event of say a hurricane headed our way it can be turned into an emergency command center for the Department of Transportation and Public Works. The entire center is expected to be completed in summer 2026, with a portion of it opening as early as next summer. We did talk about that parking garage uh, that is being constructed at this moment. That's at Southwest 168th Street. Along the corridor, there are six park and ride lots, and that's including that one parking garage that's still not open, by the way. But I just want to show you guys this parking lot that I'm at. It's at Southwest 112th Avenue. This is the park and ride. There are so many parking spaces. I'm at what looks like the very end of it, which is space number 448. You've got all of that as the park and ride. It wraps around this construction site right here. You got more spaces on the back. You've got some over here, some across along the fence and the wall over there, some back here as well. And then uh, this will be the last space that I can count right now. Everything over here is Target's parking lots. But the park and ride lot is absolutely huge. No shortage of spaces there. You got everything, like I mentioned. And then of course, the parking garage will be another great addition to just leave your car, hop on the bus, and maybe make a connection with the Metro Rail. So with that said, what did you guys think about the South Day Transit Way construction project? What do you think about the BRT stations and all the amenities that they have there? I think it's fantastic. I think it allows people to take the bus more comfortably, something that many people down here are reluctant to do because there is such a car cultured uh, city or county. So this will allow people to know that they have the comfort of air conditioning while they wait for the bus and then obviously air conditioning on the bus. So I think it's a big plus for the area. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you check out my transportation playlist. So many things. I rode the Metro Rail, Metro Mover, uh, Tri-Rail, Brightline many times. And a lot of infrastructure projects on this channel. Be sure to like, subscribe if you enjoyed. Hit the bell button so you'll be notified each time I upload a new video. And with that said, signing off from the very southern portion of Miami-Dade County. I will see you in the next video.